Marx's exploitation theory is rooted in his labor theory of value because workers don't receive the full value of their labor because capitalists earn surplus value or profit rather than only the replacement rate to pay for the cost of capital, which of course is allowed because the capital itself is based on previous labor put into it. The labor theory of value was also necessary to show that market prices wouldn't be necessary for economic calculation because the true value of goods was based on the amount of labor used to produce first the capital and then the products using that capital with a further amount of labor. Of course, the same amount of labor might produce two very different products. You could have a very nice, fine wine or a very cheap wine that people won't pay very much for, and they might both be produced with the exact same amount of labor, just on different land. This again brings us back to that question of land and the value of land. Here's a quote by von Bobrick, which essentially makes the same point about very fine wine and inferior wine and how they could be produced using the same amount of labor. This also brings up the point that prices reflect economies of scale and automation, things that make it more cheap to produce a product. It's not only the land that something is made on or the amount of capital that, based on the amount of labor that went into that capital, that is important. It's also a matter of what people are willing to pay for things that take more time and things that take less time. And the fact that prices reflect this, which is not possible if you're using the average level of technology in order to determine the price. For example, you have a very fine wine that was very labor intensive, and then you might have a very cheap beer, which was made using a factory and the economies of scale and automation in order to produce that. But should you use a price that reflects only the average level of technology and the average amount of socially necessary, socially useful labor? A very cheap beer is only valued by people often because of its very cheap price. And then, of course, there are people who can only afford something much more cheap. This is something that the market is able to handle and able to adjust the different amounts of the more expensive and the cheaper one. How was a planned economy going to handle all of this? Maybe everyone is paid the same, but does everyone desire the same goods? And doesn't it make more sense for something that was made very cheaply to actually reflect the, the cheapness of its production? And if you use the average socially necessary amount of labor, would you actually be able to produce the right amount of different goods? It's not simply a matter of socially useful or socially useless. There's a whole infinite gradation between very useful, very desired products that people are willing to pay a lot of money for all of the labor time put into them down to that cheap beer that you're only willing to pay a very small amount for. There's so much complexity in between that the willingness to pay at all different price levels is able to reflect and that a planned economy would struggle with. How could the planners know how much people valued all these different products without the aid of some kind of market pricing?